Hey folks, Jeff here. It's day five of our build and uh, it's about 10.30 in the morning right now. So it started raining last night around, uh, I think around 9 p.m. And it just now finished close to three inches of rain. Uh, so things are wet and muddy. We've got a little bit of erosion that washed out the left shoulder on the road still drivable just got to stay to the center i guess we'll fix this later on but uh kind of give you an idea of what happens when so much rain falls i mean we had a river flowing through here and it just gained speed and then you get down there and you can see it's just washed everything out and it's even undercutting there so still a couple feet away from the main part of the road but uh that's damage that we'll have to fix and eventually i've got to do something about how this water flows off this hill so that we can uh, prevent this from continuously happening the other side of the road uh, more of the same when we fixed it last time uh, I threw some rocks and stuff into this area that keeps washing out so the rocks seem to be helping but we still got erosion there it's just uh, far enough away from the the road that it doesn't affect the road anymore so we'll clean that up too eventually it's got to dry up first so what we're looking at today uh, is a lot of mud I mean when you look out here uh, yeah there's just mud everywhere now eventually I'll cover all this with rock but we're just not there yet uh, our number one priority has been getting this building up because until I get this whole building done and everything I can't move here and I've got to get this done get it doors on it get it spray foamed and then I'll uh, start moving all my household goods and everything out of the city, clearing up the house there and getting it ready to get on the market so we can get up here full time. And yeah, at first we'll live in the RV uh, while we then build the living quarters in here. And, uh, you know, we'll get to it. But for now, we've got this project to finish. So we're still working on the framing. Like I say, it's day five, and uh, we've got to get the rest of these roof purlins up. So we've got six total purlins. And then we just have a little bit of a uh, couple pieces of bracing and some bolts to tighten that door over there. We've got to tweak just a little bit and make sure it's squared up and uh, we've already leveled the columns they're all good we've plumbed the rafter it's all good so uh, just mainly getting these trusses up or I mean uh, purlins up on the rafters and finishing out this section so each of these sections is 20 foot long 50 foot wide and uh, the outside wall is 16 feet high, but then you've got a two to one pitch on the uh, roof. So total height is with the purlins and everything I think is somewhere around 21 feet. So anyway, uh, once we get this section done, then we'll start, uh, we're gonna move to the back section. So this section here on the back We've got four sections that go on the slab. So the, the slab is 50 by 80 and that'll be our enclosed uh, building. And then we've got another section that'll go out to the concrete piers out there. And uh, that'll extend the roof out another 20 feet. So this area here I'll cover with gravel or whatever. And this is basically a porch. So there'll be a walk door over here that you'll come from the living quarters out to this porch and you know we can park under it we can set up chairs tables barbecue whatever out here and uh, this will be like our porch great for uh, 
morning sunrises because this is uh, facing east here so be real nice when it's all done but uh, before we can get done we got building to do so the challenges with this section obviously we come off the existing structure uh, there'll be a column that goes in the corner over there just like those columns roof rafters etc uh, a truss that'll come across and we've got some end wall pieces so column there and column on the other end and then you've got a couple of uh, end wall pieces that'll go up here and connect to the rafters and uh, then of course there's the girts and all that stuff tying it all together so because there's an end wall on this structure uh, that'll be a little bit of a new challenge but the rest of it is pretty much all the the same of what we've been doing so it shouldn't be too bad and then when we get to the outside section it's all open so you've got two columns which will go up to uh, two rafters making a truss and then you'll come off that with uh, purlins and eaves that'll connect it to the existing structure here so all your strength on that one is in the uh, the roof and uh, then when we get down the final section that we'll do is the in section and the in section is completely different than the rest of this there are no columns it's all a uh, engineered end wall so we'll have two 14 foot by 14 foot doors that'll basically uh, go right in this area you can see uh, two bolts sticking up there for one side of the door and two bolts over on this side that's 14 foot wide for the uh, the entrance and then the other side is exactly the same as that so you got two big doors in a drive-through configuration and then we'll have to build an end wall with a special rafter and everything that goes down here so that'll be totally unique we've decided to save that section for last uh, so that's the plan we're gonna get this section done today we'll see how long it takes us I mean it is really muddy so uh, driving around in all the mud and everything is not gonna be fun and uh, just trying to get these purlins up uh, basically I lift them up and drop them from the sides and then we drive up the middle and and lift up the man lift to to go up and bolt them all on and everything and then bolt them all on on this side as well and uh, yeah it's it's muddy so that's where we're at let's see how it goes hey folks jeff here it's day six uh day five didn't go so well we got up three purlins and the winds just kicked up too high there was a cold front coming in and uh, it just got too difficult to work wasn't safe being up high and trying to move this steel around the wind you know catches steel just like anything else and it'll fly like a sail so anyway we uh, called knock it off went to town got cheeseburgers instead so uh, picked up a few other things as well today uh, it's cold this morning uh, we had a freeze last night it's down in the 30s now and uh, the uh, telehandler needed a little extra help to start it does have a block heater built into it so we had to plug it in and uh, put the battery charger on it for the cold cranking amps I think that battery on there is a little weak but we finally got her started so she's warming up now and uh, we're basically running out of time uh, my friend Hank he's uh, here for a week and then he's got to go back to work so uh, now we're trying to say okay let's get done the big heavy things that we can get done while it's the two of us uh, just to make things easier on me and Lorena later so uh, here's our plan so currently on this section we have the three purlins on the rafters up top uh, to install to basically finish the uh, putting together this 20 foot section and then everything's at least in place so we're going to go ahead and do that first 
Uh, and then we're gonna move down to the other end here. And uh, this end covers this end of the slab. So on this end, we've got two columns to put up on the outside. And we have those uh, columns laying here on the ground. So we're pre-positioned here with the two columns. And uh, I think we've also, yeah, got the two columns out there for the piers as well, which we'll do later. And then once we got those columns up, we're gonna put up at least one of the girts and the eave. And then we're going to uh, work on getting the rafter put together. So the two rafters to make the truss. I believe that's one of the rafters laying there and the other one I believe is laying over on that end. But we'll get them over here, get them put together, and then we'll raise the rafter. And once we've got the rafter raised on top of the columns, then we'll go ahead and if you look up there, you can see the two center purlins that go at the top of the truss. So we'll take those uh, two purlins, we'll install two more and that'll tie in the truss and that basically pulls everything together, holds it in place so we can achieve plumb on the uh, truss there. And then we've got, uh, see these bolt patterns here and over there. That is for the end wall that ties all that together on this end of the slab. So we'll go ahead and put that end wall, uh, at least uh, we'll evaluate it and put some of it up, whatever we need to do, just to tie the structure in so that everything's secure. And uh, the reason we do that in case the wind kicks up or whatever, we wanna make sure that everything is secure and tied in because right now, that center structure right there is the most secure part of the whole structure because it's got all the cable bracing on it as well as our temporary bracing uh, to make that steady and sturdy so that when the wind's blowing, uh, that's your main support for the whole structure. So as we tie to that, the other parts of the structure become secure uh, and safe in the wind by tying to that. We also have another set of cable bracing that will go on this end, but as long as we have that temporary bracing up there, we're okay. So we don't really need to worry about that right out of the gate. So out of the gate, we're just trying to get the big heavy steel up and uh, get that going so that uh, when it's just Lorena and I, the heavy stuff will be done. So that's where we're at. Stick with us and see how it goes.